In this video, I'm introducing the new version of ColorShift. First, there's a new highlight checkbox. For example, if I increase yellow saturation and activate the highlight checkbox, we can see exactly which areas of the image are being affected. It's clear that the skin tones are also being influenced, since the yellow range overlaps with the skin tone range. By reducing the yellow range, we can see in the vector scope that the range narrows and skin tones are affected less. We can also expand it, which will push the adjustments towards red and green. But in this case, I'm reducing it. Now I will turn off the highlight button so we can compare before and after. So this is before and this is after. We can also exclude highlights from being affected by the density sliders by using the deep slider. So this is before, we see yellows in the highlights and if I increase the deep slider, the highlights will get less affected. I've also improved the underlying mass for the deep slider. Now when you increase it, you get a much softer transition. Let me show this with another image. I increase the density, activate the highlight button and we can clearly see which areas are affected, including parts of the face. Now I will increase the deep slider. You'll notice the skin tones are less affected because they're in a brighter range. This is the image before and this is after. With the deep slider at zero, everything is affected. Increasing the deep slider limits the effect on brighter areas, like skin tones. Another new feature, the U sliders now also have a deep slider. If I shift red towards magenta and click the highlight button, you'll see parts of the face are affected. Now I will increase the deep slider. Without it, the face is influenced. When I increase it, the face will be excluded. Here's another image where this is even clearer. I shift the red hue again and we see it affects the face. The highlight button helps us visualize that. When I raise the deep slider, we limit the effect to darker areas. Before and after. The vector scope shows that raising the deep slider softens the transition. I will show it again with a test image. If I shift the blue hue towards cyan and increase the deep slider, we see the adjustment is mostly in the dark areas, while bright areas are left untouched. The DC tails are available in two versions, spherical and tetra. These are simple two different mathematical models. Neither is better. I recommend downloading the demo and trying both to see what suits you. The spherical model includes the range slider, which the tetrahedral version doesn't. That's why the spherical model offers a few more variations. As you can see, one means one slider per U, density, U or saturation. 2 means 2 slider per U, 3 means 3. T stands for tetrahedral. If I select mono T1 density, I get 6 density sliders, one for each U, plus global density, the deep slider and the highlight button. Some users prefer a clean interface, others like more control. Many find the larger setups a bit overwhelming, sometimes 6 sliders are enough instead of 21. I've also removed the skin tone slider, for good reason. There's a separate video where I explain why I think the skin tone slider in Color Slice isn't particularly effective. As you can see, skin tones often sit between yellow and red, not directly on a skin tone line. In global look development, I believe a skin tone slider can actually get in the way and even introduce artifacts. That's why it's not included in the Color Shift pack. If you want to work specifically on skin tones, I recommend using the Color Shaper DCTEL. With the Color Shaper you can reduce the range, set the center point of the skin tone, increasing the range again and then make adjustments, like increasing saturation and density. There's also a dedicated video about the Color Shaper DCTEL pack, linked in the description. What's great about the Color Shaper is that it's not limited to vectors like red or yellow, it works independently. So here's the test image. 
I select the skin tone detail, reduce the range, shift the center point, and you can clearly see the change in the vector scope. Now I expand the range again for a soft transition into neighboring hues. With color slice, changes are always bordered by the red and yellow vectors, which can cause problems when it comes to global look development. In comparison, here the color shaper detail, if I reduce saturation, we get a smoother blend towards neighboring use. With color slice, transitions are harsher. You can try softening it by pushing the red center towards magenta and yellow towards green, but it's less intuitive. With the skin detail, it's simpler. Adjust saturation, narrow the range, set the center point, expand the range again. You can also adjust the luma range to target highlights or shadows specifically. There's a free demo version of all my DCTL packs on my website. Download it and try them out to see what fits your workflow. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment or send me an email. Have a great day and see you next time.